Hey, what's up guys? Today's video, I'm gonna take you along for a little vlog style, a little bit behind the scenes. We've got a bunch of stuff going on. We've got throttle bodies going out today. And I just received these hose clamps that we're gonna be using on the Viper. So I'll link these for you guys, but there's two different sizes and it looks like the smaller of the two. Uh, I ordered these because these are the ones that we're gonna use on the silicone hoses. So they're not gonna bite into the actual silicone hose and tear it. So we'll go ahead and uh, throw this on and I think we might take the Viper today to run some errands. So here we go in the garage and this hose I'm returning in exchange for two other hoses uh, from the vendor that we used to install these silicone hoses. So this one didn't fit and that's why it's gonna look like this. And I'm just waiting for the final pieces so I can release that full video for you guys. And that's why I kind of look a little Mickey Mouse over here. I've got my old original hose here, just the regular rubber one. You can see how cheesy that looks in comparison. And I had to put just a regular band clamp on this to get it to seal. For some weird reason, this little valve is a lot smaller diameter, the spigot or the spout or barb that's on here. And you really have to crank it down in so much as uh, this one here still rotates a little bit. Even though it's the same clamp on both sides, this barb that comes out of here for the heater core is much bigger than the tiny little one there. So that's where I'm gonna start to use these guys. Um, if any of these spring clamps end up leaking, I'm gonna convert them over to this. But at least for here right now, I'm gonna put this here, which is gonna be a nice clamp and upgrade from these ones which look janky and they cut into the hose and all that stuff so let's swap out that real quick and i just want to heat cycle this thing before we take it all right and here we go with our distilled water just add it up a little bit and i'm gonna cap it once more again all right guys so once the fans kicked on you'll see that your fluid level is going to drop and i topped it way up with distilled water and then once the fans kick off, throw the cap back on. And what I'll usually do is make sure you're keeping an eye on your temperature gauge and I'll show you guys the temperature gauge anyways. But I'll let it kind of heat cycle and then I'll let it fully cool again. I'll pull the cap off and then I'll top everything back with the water. But you can see my temps are staying in check. That's normal operation for one of these Vipers, especially when it's over 100 degrees ambient temperatures. You see my fan cycles on and then it shuts off. So like I said, I let this heat cycle get up to temperature. I'm gonna pull it out right now anyways, uh, cause I gotta do some work with some other vehicles. We'll let it fully cool down again and then we'll top it up again. All right, well, I was gonna take the Viper, but I think it makes sense to take the Dakota RT cause we're picking up the condenser for that Silverado project and I don't know if it's gonna fit in that thing. So let's go. Here she is boys. So I'm gonna give you guys a cold start with the uh, new resonators on here we're probably gonna have to change this up again actually we are gonna change this up again because not too uh i don't know we tried it to try to make it work better but it ended up producing a ton of drone so uh we're gonna have to switch this up again but i'll give you guys a cold start of this So we are at AutoZone and I noticed my temp started to go up a little bit and I instantly knew what it was. And I'll show you guys since I always promised you guys, I will shoot it to you straight. And I already know because I ordered a more beefy fan controller, but 
there's the fuse holder. This is on that fan uh, relay kit that we used before, and look at the fuse. It turned it into peanut butter. So I'm gonna throw another fuse in there just to get us back. It does 107 ambient temps out today, so I'll throw in a fuse from AutoZone just to get us back, but I definitely have to uh, replace this Hayden fan controller because this one, I don't know what they were thinking when they built this, but the gauging and everything is definitely not sufficient. So we'll go ahead and we'll go into AutoZone. We'll pick up that condenser for that Silverado and at the same time get a fuse to get us back. All right, guys, we're back. We got the AC condenser. We got our fuses. So let's go ahead and we'll put the fuse in so we can get this stupid fan going at least to get us back. And we'll put in that beefier controller at a later date, which is probably gonna have to be sooner than later, honestly, the way this thing's going. All right, so we got the bigger fuse in there. We'll keep this as our souvenir. And if I turn the ignition to the run position, we should get our fan rolling here. Yeah, fans back on. So she's back running, but we're gonna have to get that other fan controller on there to make sure she keeps blowing. All right, let's start this girl up and get out of here. There we go, temps are back in check. Yeah, when that fan is on, you guys, look at how low my temps drop. So she's dropping dramatically once the coolant's circulating, like look where that's sitting. And I ain't joking, 106. And that's where she sits. We just gotta get that other fan controller on there. All right guys, one more stop, I promise. We're at AutoZone so that I can get the PAG46 oil for this Silverado. Let's go, ooh, music. All right guys, we're back in the truck. I don't know if I fully explained that, but the one auto zone that I got the condenser for, for the truck didn't have the oil to put back in the system since we're replacing the condenser. So we out of here, we out of here. Let's head back finally. All right guys, so I know you guys want an update on this fan. Look at how cool she's running. And still 103 out. We've been driving for like a good half an hour or so, stop and go. She's staying cool, so the fan works. Just that controller we need to work on. All right, guys, we're back to the garage. So let's get in there and I'll show you guys what else we're getting into today. All right, guys, so uh, back here and a couple things. I pulled that condenser out of the box and interestingly enough, this one is actually reinforced compared to the one, the OEM one that's on there. So this one has a nice reinforcement all the way across on this little end tank here compared to that one. If you guys uh, didn't see that video yet, as far as me diagnosing my friend's truck over there. And right now I'm just waxing the Viper. I washed it last night and because it's so hot out, you can't even wash vehicles during the day. It's, they just end up getting water spots all over them. So I know there's all that ceramic wax, all that stuff or ceramic coating. I just stick with the basics right now. Um, I still have this full bottle pretty much from before. So uh, I've always liked Meguiar stuff. Smells good, works good. So I still have this, so I'm not just gonna throw it out. I'm gonna keep using it. So I'm just applying a coat of wax on the car. Um, I've polished it a few times, but I haven't done it lately. But for now, I got so much going on that I'm just gonna at least put a nice coat of wax on it. Um, the paint's still pretty good. It could use a little bit of buffing, but just from the years of washing it because I think I originally really cleaned it up but um, yeah I'll get to that at some point but for now I just want to coat it protect it so it's good I do actually want to do that again to the Viper or not the Viper the Dakota sorry I'm staring at the Viper because we did end up polishing and buffing the Dakota but then we never protected it with wax so um, I do want to buff it one more time and then protect it but for now I'm gonna do this you can see I put wax here on this side, but not on this side here. So I'll go ahead, do this. We'll see how she looks after. But I mean, overall this paint is in pristine condition and that's why I want to keep it that way. You can see it's still super bright. So anyways, let's get a coat of this on there see where we end up.
All right, guys, so I've done the passenger side of the car so far. I did the whole hood, but, and the whole front bumper, but you can really see how shiny she is now. Look at that. The hood is up, it's not closed, just so you guys know. But she's looking mighty fine. Look at that. I don't know if we can do a nice comparison. I mean, it's still shiny on this side, but man, did it ever brighten up the other side? So you can see up here, it's a little more dull compared to way over here. It's looking all cherry. So for some, you know, somewhat affordable wax, that McGuire stuff definitely does the ticket. So I still gotta do all the back and this whole passenger side and both bottom sills as well. Hot damn, you guys. I haven't even cleaned the wheels. This thing, I should do this more often. <laughs> just with all the madness going on. That's a bug, don't worry, that's a bug. That's just a bug. With all the madness going on, all these different projects, like I sometimes uh, don't get a chance to do some of these like smaller things, but holy, you guys, what a difference. So, it just goes to show you, I know there's all these fancy waxes out there these days, but the good old tried and true still does what it needs to do and doesn't cost hundreds or thousands of dollars to get done. Just about an hour's worth of time or so and some elbow grease, throw on some music or a podcast. That's what I like to do. Well, more podcasts than anything. I just listen to some stuff, catch up on some topics and that's what comes out. So huge difference, you guys. Uh, I'm glad that I took the extra hour to do that out of my day because that is looking incredible. And now I know she's protected and she's smooth as silk. So like I said, one, one of these days, once some of these different projects kind of calm down a little bit, I will get back to buffing this, but at least for now it's protected. It's got a coat of wax on there. So the sun's not gonna take its toll on this thing. Even though it doesn't spend too much time outside, just when I take it out for the day, I don't leave it outside ever, but she, uh, she still cleans up nice boys. She still does for a 20 year old car. All right guys, so that's gonna pretty much wrap it up for today. Um, I've just been doing these kind of vlog style videos for you guys, because you can kind of see what goes on behind the scenes. Me running around, getting parts, tackling small little things, uh, getting some of these projects prepared, and also video editing. If you guys want me to go into that, I can show you as well, because that's a big part of my day too, is editing, posting, uh, doing the thumbnails for these videos and stuff like that, and you know, just all that stuff. So there is a lot that goes into this. Plus still working uh, a bit of a normal day job at this point. So if you guys have any questions, any feedback, uh, you guys wanna see more of any certain stuff or you have any questions on any of the stuff, hit me down below. I'll do my best to answer it. Make sure you give a thumbs up before you take off. Hit that subscribe button if you're new to the channel. See you guys on the next video.